Hi guys, I'm Carla from Carla's Ceramics and welcome back to another instruction video. Easter is getting closer so I thought let's make some Easter themed videos. And in today's video I will be showing you how to make Easter eggs on a potter's wheel. And later on I will also be showing you how to decorate them and how to glaze them. So without any further ado, let's head over to the wheel and get started with throwing the eggs. I start off with taking a big piece of clay and no, the egg is not going to be this big, but I will be throwing the eggs from the hump. Throwing from the hump means that you take a big piece of clay like this and you put this on top of the wheel. And later on you will only be centering the top part and will be throwing a piece from the clay on top of the hump. This will make it easier to work with smaller pieces of clay and get them easily centered. And after cutting off a piece you can just use the clay again for the next piece. So with this big piece I can make about 10 eggs if I'd like. And what I do is first press it onto the wheel to make sure that it gets stuck. And then I center the top part of the clay. I do this like I normally do, so I just take the clay, press it in between my hands and then I cone it up and press it down and I repeat this multiple times until this piece of clay is fully centered. And then I start making the egg. I first pinch a little ball of clay on top that I'm going to work with and I like to make the bottom of this ball a little bit smaller so I press my little fingers towards each other so that it's clear for me which clay I'm working with. Then I start opening up the shape, I do this by pressing my middle finger into the clay and then I pull my finger outwards. And since it's an egg, it will be round on both sides, so I'm also making the bottom round. So the middle of the bottom is a bit deeper than the sides of the bottom because I will be trimming away quite some clay. And then I start pulling up the walls. I do this by holding a sponge in my right hand and I press towards my left hand on the inside while making an upwards movement. I do this multiple times so that the clay gets thinner and the walls get higher and I get this little cylinder on top of the clay. And as you can see I like to hold the thumb of my left hand on top of my right hand. This way I can move both of my hands at the same time. And then before closing the form, because the egg will be a closed form, I get rid of the water on the inside so that it doesn't crack. And then I slowly start closing the form. I hold my hands around the piece and then I bring my fingers towards the shoulder at the top so that I press the clay towards the middle. When you do this the clay becomes a bit thicker so you might like to pull it up an extra time. And then I fully close it by just going over the top part with my finger and press the clay towards itself at the top just like this. And if the top is a little bit wobbly you can just cut away a little bit of clay by pressing it away with your finger. And then I go over it with my finger to define the shape a little bit more and to make sure that it's all centered. And then what I like to do with closed forms, because closed forms work a little bit different, is go over them with a straight wooden loamer. This makes it easier for me to get it into a fluent shape, so I just go over it a few times to define the shape a little bit. And I saw that the top was a little bit too sharp for me, so I decided to press this downwards a little bit. And then you can make the egg shape that you'd like. Eggs are round on both sides and always have a thicker part on the bottom. But you can actually decide yourself what you want the bottom to become because you can throw the eggs upside down or straight up. It doesn't really matter because you will be trimming it round on both sides. So while making a shape you can decide yourself what is going to be the top part if you know what I mean. And then when I'm happy with the shape I go over it with this sponge to get rid of any slip or water that's on the piece and to just smooth it out. And then the throwing part is actually already done and I take my needle tool and make a little hole at the bottom. I do this so that the air has a way out because if you don't do this and the clay dries, the clay will shrink and then it might crack. And then what I personally like to do is take a heat gun and blow dry the egg. I do this so that it becomes drier and it's easier for me to take it off without making any scratches or fingerprints. If you don't have a heat gun you could maybe use a hair dryer but you could also just cut it off while it's still wet. In that case you will just have to be a bit more careful when taking it off. And then I cut it off. There are multiple ways of cutting it off and I will show you two different ways in this video. The first way is a bit tricky but quite easy. I hold the needle tool in my right hand and I hold the egg with my left hand and then I slowly press the needle tool into the clay to just cut it off and it might be a little bit difficult to find the middle but just move it around a little bit until you feel that the egg comes off and then you can just take it like this and you've got your egg and it is ready to dry before you can trim it. And now I will show you what to do with a hump of clay so that you can throw another egg with the same piece of clay. It's actually quite easy but the top might be a little bit dry from blow drying it so what I like to do is add a little bit of water and then I just cone it up and press it down a few times. And then I again take this little piece of clay on the top that I'm going to work with and then I just follow the same steps as I did before to make the next egg. And as you can see this egg is actually upside down. The previous one was straight up but this one has a thicker piece on the top if that makes sense. So the egg is actually upside down but, but as I said before this doesn't really matter. So you can just decide yourself which side of the egg you want to use as the top or the bottom. I will now show you a different way of cutting off the egg from the hump. 
This way might be a little bit easier and can't really go wrong. So what I do is take a wooden knife and I make this little line in the clay. This helps me to cut it off straight. Then I take my wire tool and I bend this around the egg and then I just slowly pull it towards myself with one hand and I hold the egg with my other hand to make sure that it doesn't fall off. And then as you can see it has a nice flat bottom which will make trimming it a lot easier. And then when your egg is leather hard it is time to trim it. I like to trim it on top of my giving grip and as you can see I just hang it in between those little hands. In my opinion that's just the easiest way to do it. But it can be a little bit difficult to get the piece centered. To fully get it centered I let it turn and then I hold my nail against it which will make a line on one side that's sticking out a little bit. And then I will stop the wheel and press it towards the other side to get it in the middle. And I just repeat this a few times until the clay is enough in the middle in my opinion. And then I start trimming it. I start with trimming it with a small tool. This way I don't have to put too much pressure on it and the egg won't fall out. And as you can see I start making it rounder since the egg has two round sides I just keep cutting away more clay and I do this by just going over it from the top to the bottom and the bottom to the top and then when I almost have the shape that I want I take a bit of a bigger trimming tool that's flat and I go over it a few more times to just smooth it out and make it one fluent shape and when trimming it you also have to decide which side you want to be wider than the other side since eggs are not round if that makes sense and then when I'm finished with trimming I go over it with a sponge to smooth it out and then I go over it again with this trimming tool which helps me to get rid of the slip that's on the piece and then I go over it with my finger to smooth it out even more so that I don't have to sand it and it's just nice and smooth. And then the trimming part is done and you have to take out the egg from the giving grip. I carefully do this by holding one hand underneath the egg so that it doesn't fall. And then I open the giving grip with the other hand. And then the egg is actually almost finished but I'm still going to decorate it. And then again I make a hole in the piece, I like to do this at the bottom and I use a hole maker for this. You have to make a hole in it because the clay shrinks and the air needs a way out. Otherwise it might crack or even explode in the kiln. And then I also like to go over the sides of the hole with a sponge to just smooth it out and make sure there are no sharp edges. And then I start decorating the eggs. For decorating it I've decided to use this tool. This tool has these little metal balls on both sides. They have different sizes and I have also multiple tools for this with even more sizes. But I'm just going to use these two for these eggs. And by pressing the tool on top of the clay I make this texture. And I've decided to make a flower pattern all over the egg. I make one bigger hole and then around this hole I make six smaller holes. Which are the petals of the flower. And just like that I go over the whole piece and just fill it with flowers. But you can of course make anything you'd like. And this is what it looks like after I've filled the whole piece with flowers on the top and the bottom and all of the sides. And I think it looks quite fun and nice. And then over to another egg. With this egg I decided to just make a straight line of texture onto the piece. And to make a straight line I use the line between the part that I trimmed and the part that I didn't trim. I can always see a little difference in the texture of the clay. So this can make it easier to get a straight line. And then after making a whole circle around the egg with the small texture I decided to make another line with the bigger side of the tool. And I just made every dot in between the previous two dots if that makes sense. And then after making this line I also made a third line with a smaller tool underneath the bigger dots again. And then this egg is finished as well and I move over to the last egg of this video. With this egg I want to start off with the same circle as the previous one. But unfortunately I made a mistake and I didn't really follow the line properly. So it didn't line up and I kind of messed it up. And that's also why I stopped recording because I thought I was going to throw away the egg. But then I decided to just keep going. So I just kept making the little dots and I started making dots in between the previous dots. And instead of making circles around the egg I decided to make this one big spiral. And I actually decided to fill the whole piece with this texture. So I just kept putting dots in between the previous two dots. And that way I worked my way up and then I also worked my way down. And at the top and the bottom the dots became closer towards each other. So I started to give less pressure which will make the dots smaller. And that way I was able to work all the way up. And at the very end I just added the little spiral because it didn't really fit. But this way I just made a lot of texture on it and it turned out quite nice in my opinion. And then this piece is finished as well and the eggs are ready to dry before biscuit fire. And then after it has been biscuit fired I start glazing it. I'm going to glaze the first egg with the glaze Marigold from Emmaco. It's a Celadon glaze which means that it is a little bit see-through. And because of that it will become a bit darker at places where it's applied a bit thicker. And because of that you will really see the texture afterwards if everything goes right. Because the little holes will hold more glaze than the rest of the egg. 
So that's why I decided to go for a Celadon glaze. And I'm applying three coats of this glaze all over the egg. I started with the top part, then when this is a dried and I can hold it, I glazed it bottom part. And just like that I applied three coats. And I decided to glaze the second egg with the glaze Aquamarine from Bots Glazes. It's a pro glaze and also kind of works the same as a Celadon glaze. So if everything goes right, it becomes a bit darker at the places where I made the texture. And I apply this glaze two coats all over the piece. I only apply two coats because I will be firing it to a high temperature. You can also use this glaze to fire it to a lower temperature, but then I would recommend to apply three coats. But for now, I'm just applying two coats all over the piece. And I'm glazing the last egg with the glaze Jade from Emico. It is also a Celadon glaze, so the texture will come out great, I hope. Uh, <laughs> I already know how it looks. So um, with this one, I also applied three coats all over the piece. And it's important to make sure that you really get the glaze into the texture. So you really need to press it in there with a the brush and maybe go over it a few times while it's still wet. To make sure that all of the holes are filled with glaze because you don't want any empty spots after the firing. And I also apply three coats all over the piece. And it's of course important to let the glaze dry in between coats. And also before you put it into the kiln. And since the eggs are glazed on all of the sides, you can't really put them down in the kiln. So I will be using this interesting piece of kiln furniture that can hold the eggs like this. And this is what the eggs look like after they've been glaze fired. That was it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it and learned something new from it. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And if you're going to make these Easter eggs yourself and go to post them on Instagram, please tag me at Calvin because I would love to see it. I hope to see you next week. Bye!